Welcome to Buenos Aires where I am house sitting this month. I have already been in Argentina for about a month. I was in Mendoza before this and this is who I'm taking care of this month by the way. And this is Botan. Say hi Botan. Sam and I are gonna go take the dogs for a walk and then I'm gonna show you around Buenos Aires. What bits of her go in what bits of this? No, I don't remember. That looks right, doesn't it? Alright, we're just doing the morning walk now. Sam is very far ahead because Soho is sniffing literally everything. Um, the highlight so far has been window cleaners. I don't know how people do that job. Just waiting at the train crossing. Alright, let's go! Right now I'm walking towards Palermo from where we're staying, which is Vincente Lopez. And this is quite an affluent area and it's really far away from the city center. In fact, it's technically not even Buenos Aires city. It's just outside of it. The walk I'm on right now is gonna take about an hour and 40 minutes. And our first stop is gonna be the Buenos Aires uh, Chinatown, which I'm really excited about. But obviously on the way, we're gonna see some other cool stuff. And I thought walking the two dogs was hard work. Sam and I ate here last night and it was one of the best meals we've had in Argentina so far. I mean, it's Peruvian, but that's no shade. I love Argentinian food as well, but that was a really nice restaurant and the people there were so friendly. I've been to a lot of Chinatowns and this is definitely one of the nicer ones. The vibe here, there's loads of food I haven't tried any yet, but I might have to come back to to eat some, there's actually a lot of sushi which is Japanese. I'm really intrigued by this area and I'm gonna do a bit of voiceover now. I'm gonna do research when I edit the video and tell you more about the area. Argentina has been a popular spot for migrants wanting to come to South America since the 19th century. The majority have come from Europe, especially Italy and Spain. Many Jewish immigrants escaping persecution in Europe came here as well. And the country has the largest Jewish population in Latin America and seventh in the world. The Chinese community came to Argentina in three waves. The first happened between 1914 and 1949 during the two world wars and mainly consisted of immigrants from small coastal towns. The second wave mainly came from Taiwan and Hong Kong during the 1980s and the third happened in the 90s. When they first emigrated here, many families opened their own businesses, restaurants, supermarkets and dry cleaning shops in particular. And nowadays Barrio Chino or Chinatown is a great spot for finding authentic Chinese food and groceries. It's also a popular spot unsurprisingly to celebrate Chinese New Year and the celebrations look super, super fun in pictures but obviously as it's June I have missed them this year. I'm definitely gonna come back and try the Chinese food here. I have spent a lot of time traveling around China and so I'm really excited at the prospect of finding something authentic. I'll post about it on my Insta or TikTok so make sure you follow me over there. And I've made it to Palermo. I cheated a little bit. I got I got a taxi. Palermo is probably the most touristy area of all of Buenos Aires but it's really nice. It's got loads of food options and right now we're going to a place called Chori. They do really really nice chori pan. It's most basic chori pan is chori y pan. It's chorizo and bread with some chimichurri on top of it. But at this place, they take it to the next level. Hola, ¿qué tal? Por favor, una chorichanga okay. y agua sin gas. was amazing. This is Plaza Serrano. This is one of the central squares of Palermo. Annoyingly, I need to get some work done today, so I'm gonna head back very soon, but first, <coughs> I'm gonna find some dessert. So we're gonna go, I'm not even gonna use my phone, normally I use Google Maps, I'm gonna use my eyes. Hola, buenas. Muchas gracias. All right, I'm back. Number one, the healthy alpha horse I got are actually delicious. Number two, this episode of The Office where, spoiler alert, Toby comes back. It's so good, even when you're watching it for the fifth time. Ah! <laughs> Final step is getting some groceries and I'm going to this huge car for that's across the road from us. When I'm abroad, I love seeing these big supermarkets because it just tells you so much about the local culture. Like things are different. The, the way they shop, the things they buy are completely different. Like here in Argentina, I already noticed this when I was in Mendoza in my previous vlog, that um, they have these massive parts of the shop dedicated solely to yerba mate, a tea that's like super, super popular locally. And they keep a lot of their stuff in bags, like milk in bags, mayonnaise, up. Anyway, so I'm gonna try to do some stealth vlogging and show you. Oh, I almost ran the over. I'm um, show you what the shop looks like. Vloggers are the worst. Right, my shop is done and I'm ready for a debrief because I have many thoughts. First of all, the pasta selection here is incredible. They have so much fresh pasta, so much pre-made stuff, stuff that you can put in the freezer. And that shouldn't be too surprising when you realize that about 60% of Argentinians are of Italian heritage. In a similar vein, the wine aisle is incredible. It's divided by different varietals, Malbec being the most famous. I've just come from Mendoza. I had much 
I had much more back in the world talking like this. Um, probably because I feel really self-conscious. I've purposely picked an aisle that I think nobody's going to come to. I mean, no, what even are these? But um, yeah, you never know. The fresh fruit and vegetables I'm actually very impressed with. This thing right here, it's, um, it's a type of pumpkin. Tastes a lot more like courgette or zucchini. Um, very, very, very nice. I'm going to be like slicing them and frying them. This is actually a very special shop because I have picked up my first mate ever. The House Red has a very special yerba mate mug. I'm going to show you later, but it made me laugh. So I got myself a bag of mate. I don't know. If, if you're Argentinian, let me know. Did I, did I make the right choice? So I'm going to go pay now and I only have two concerns. Number one, I don't know if I was supposed to weigh my fruit and veg. I know in a lot of countries you're supposed to do that and they had plastic bags for them, but I didn't see the scales anywhere. So um, hopefully, hopefully that's fine. Oh, Christ. And number two, a much more pressing problem is I don't know if I have enough money. So I've been about 95% successful. I had to put back the mango and the mayonnaise because I couldn't afford them anymore because I only had 14,000 in cash and um, I didn't have my debit card on me. But the lady was so nice. I looked at her and went, um, and she's laughing, she's like, yeah, that's fine. Um, anyway, yeah, that's not too bad. Hi, I've got a few things. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> Correct reaction. Oh, nice. Oh, are you filming it? So it's not but I'll just, it no, I want you here. Oh, there's some gloop in here. The chicken, oh, actually. it's a gloop. Oh, chicken gloop. Perfect. Okay. Some flowers for you. What is that? I don't want to flatter myself, but I'm being an absolute domest Ooh, domestic goddess today. So I'm gonna make lunch. I've got the roast chicken that we bought earlier. I'm gonna serve that with some cabbage and some gnocchi. It's kind of like a take on a German sauerkraut and duck and dumpling type dish. And while I've got that cooking, there is another thing that I need to attend to, and that is exchanging money. Now here in Argentina, they're going through a very, very severe inflation. Oh! Christ is a burden. As I was saying, Argentina is going through a really horrible economic crisis. Their inflation is one of the highest in the world, which is absolutely terrible for the people that live here. And I haven't come here to pray of the system, but it is good if you're coming in from abroad. Your dollars, your euros, your pounds, whatever you use, are gonna buy you more Argentinian pesos. But the best way to take advantage of that system is by bringing in cash, physical money, and exchanging it here. We have brought in about a thousand dollars each me and sam my boyfriend and we are exchanging it as we go a hundred two hundred dollars at a time because the rate keeps changing and today i am trying it a new way so far we've just been exchanging kind of on the street informally with um about 470 pesos per um dollar we live in the uk but we still brought in dollars because they're more desirable today we are trying a new system where someone literally comes to your house and just brings you an envelope full of cash to me that feels incredibly dodgy but this is the way things are done apparently um i got the stuff this is, it feels so dodgy. Job for you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, back to cooking. Hi. No food for you. Okay, I told you about the yerba mate cup and here it is, I need, I need a break. So I'm gonna attempt to make this for the first time. It's a Stanley yerba mate cup. How, how random is that? Um, the straws, if you haven't seen one before, are perforated at the bottom because you put all the herbs in the cup and then you're drinking through this so they don't get in your mouth. According to the video I watched, you put in more than you think, like loads. Here we go. Now, what I saw in the video is you kind of cover it and, hmm, and then flip it. They definitely weren't using a paper towel, but anyway, here it goes. And then you get it, you like shake it to one side. So you see there's like an empty space at the bottom. It goes on this side. Okay, and this final tip isn't from the video. It's from my friend, she's Argentinian, and she told me to pour it, and I'm trying to remember what she said. She said to pour it like just by the spoon, but not everywhere. Like right on the spoon? I don't know, this does not feel right. I don't think I've done a very good job. But this is what we've got right now. Anyway, listen, my first try. I'm gonna let it brew for a bit. Look how nice the sunset is. I'm gonna try and do this as a time lapse. And for dinner, I am about to go meet Millie. She is an Argentinian influencer and she very kindly reached out to me. We're gonna go grab dinner at a local pizzeria, which she recommended, so I know, I know it's gonna be good. And can I just say, as a society, I know we've become really cavalier about meeting people we've met online, and I know there are dangers or whatever, but 
<laughs> but I have had really good experiences. Some of my best friends now are people that I met online. All right, I'm nearly at the meeting spot, but I definitely underestimated Buenos Aires traffic. It's one of those things I've read about and I should have known better, but I just, I don't know. I'm one of those people that always assume things are gonna work out and I'm often wrong. This area feels hugely familiar to me because it really reminds me of Canary Wharf. It's got all the high rises, you got the water, you got some boats, you got some terrible music and some really, really high prices. I feel like the slightly soulless, but nevertheless very glamorous vibe of Canary Wharf and other financial districts by the water than then you're gonna like this. Millie took me to Pizzeria Guerin, a restaurant so famous that it has its own Wikipedia page and has had guests like Lionel Messi and Manu Ginobili. The pizza was incredible. And then we went to a nearby rooftop bar. Probando un fernet por primera vez. Me gusta, es, es rico. Es rico. Mm. Le doy un Ocho. Ocho? Ah, oh my God. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week for more travel content from Argentina and beyond.